friends, welcome to the devlog for Alpha 2 of Update 100 of Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades. We're going to start, as always, with a quick sound check. Make sure speakers aren't up too high. Wonderful. Let's see how we did there. Ah, not too bad. So, what have we got for you this week? Well, we have a continuation of working on the filtering and hand smoothing systems uh, that debuted in last week's alpha, and we have a, uh, a new toy or two. But let's start with filtering stuff, because that is what I've been having you folks test. I uh, deeply appreciate all of the feedback. Uh, this was a bit of a stressful week working on it. It was definitely one of those uh, math is terrible kind of weeks, uh, because very soon after pushing last week's alpha, there were a bunch of bugs reported, specifically ones that would do this thing where you'd be sort of aiming a two-handed weapon and it would just jerk to the side suddenly like that, but only at certain rotations. And I'll be honest, this one, this one gave me some panic attacks this week. I, I had the darndest time trying to figure out what was going on with it. I actually built myself some visualization tools for it, like this fake rifle here, where uh, where basically I could hold this with two hands and hold the trigger down and actually get a, uh, a vector printout of sort of where it was detecting the uh, controllers forward, right, and up axes and such. And what was happening is that some of these arrows were pointing backwards only when you would rotate between like this very specific direction with the gun, which was confusing. And uh, I'll talk about what was actually going on with it later, but suffice to say, the bug is fixed. Um, and with it, we have some new options for our filtering that I thought I would show you. Oops, that is not going back to the main page. Uh, hand smoothing and filtering is a new section in our options here. And uh, these are the first sort of options that have been added. With hand filtering mode, you can have it in raw input mode, which is what we're used to. In fact, I'll go back, man, that's annoying, um, and show my controller here. So with raw input, the gun sticks to the controller just how you would expect super super fast with smooth guns only you will notice that firearms get the filtering get the smoothing but things like magazines and melee weapons and anything else that you would want to be able to move around snappily still move around snappily and with smooth all objects mode even things like the magazines and melee weapons and things like that uh, are smoothed Let's go back to that. We also have now for long gun stabilization, obviously I got sort of two groups of feedback back on this option, which was the folks who mainly plink at the range or mainly play so, you know, slower modes, especially those with on, on platforms with bad tracking, uh, were like, oh my goodness, I can actually shoot at long range now. This is wonderful. And, uh, and the folks who play really high intensity fast modes that have them say, moving their gun back and forth really frequently were like, it's cool to be able to snipe at distance, but it's a little sluggish when you're trying to sort of jerk your hand back and forth, uh, engaging close targets. And so in addition to always on and disabled for long gun stabilization, we have this new intermediate mode called when trigger held, which allows me to, for demonstration, have it up here, which as you can see, the stabilization is not activated. We're getting some tracking wobble, even though I've got hand filtering enabled, but I can just pull the trigger on the forward grip. Boom. Wonderful. And just engage it on demand. Obviously, this has some problems in that if I had like an M203 mounted on this, I would fire the M203 with the trigger. But simply put, there isn't uh, there isn't a spare button that isn't being used by something um, because the uh, the sort of forward and attachable foregrip is using the two buttons that are available to us in streamline mode and the trigger. So this is just uh, any gun that has uh, an attachable grenade launcher on it, I guess, is uh, going to be inherently un uh, unstable. Uh, in that way. Sorry, you can't have your rifle do absolutely everything at the same time. 
Uh, and, and I also spun out pistol grip two-hand stabilization into its own mode, as I noticed that a number of people were like, yeah, that's what, it's, it's cool to be able to stand at the range and hit things at 200 meters off a revolver, but in actual CQB combat, which is around when you would probably be drawing your sidearm, it stinks to sort of have, to sort of be trying to get the recoil benefit of your two hands together, but all of a sudden having the gun be very, very sluggish and tend to come to a still point. So this is now independently toggleable. So you can still, let's see here, boop, boop, boop. Uh, just because they're going to get in the way of my sights. But with this disabled now, pick that up again. Beautiful. Should be able to... just fine. So yeah, so hopefully that is enough options. Remember, if you like that long gun stabilization, it doesn't depend on hand filtering mode. So I can still have, if you're like, no, I want especially my handguns to have this like super snappy behavior, but I want the long gun stabilization. These two things can be disabled. Long gun stabilization can be enabled and it will still function. Before you enable it, obviously you'll have the same sort of shaky view but I can just pull the trigger. Take my shots and still be able to not have that trigger held. Go back and forth as snappily as I need. Obviously, never do that in a range. So there you go. So that is uh, how that works. I am still sort of determining um, if any other sort of options are appropriate. I know in general, anytime I show off a new feature, folks are like, oh, I want to be able to turn all the knobs. But the thing that you always have to remember from the perspective of a designer is two things. One, nine out of 10, probably even higher percentage of the audience is going to leave them on whatever the defaults are because they don't know how they work internally. A lot of people never find the options. Uh, choice paralysis, etc. And so the most important thing to me before I start adding all these knobs to fiddle with is getting feedback on the default because the default is what almost everyone is going to use. Um, I still may add in some sort of filtering strength for the hand filtering here, uh, but I haven't decided on that yet. But I'd like you folks to continue testing with this. Let me know what you think. Anyway, let's jump over to the new toy. So we are over in the Proving Grounds and it's time to take a look at that new toy. That's right, we've got another Meat Fortress object kit, uh, courtesy as always of the wonderful work of uh, Pi Savvy. And uh, to test this out, let's get some volunteers. Grab some soldiers here, maybe a heavy and uh, yeah, maybe, maybe a sniper back there. So. The, uh, the first thing that we have is the grenade to go with the uh, medic, which is uh, actually a helpful tool. This is called the, uh, the Uber grenade, and it is an impact grenade that momentarily pulses full in vulnerability and during that process, applies a ton of healing. So this is very much an assisting Sosix that are fighting next to you uh, grenade, and I will throw it here. So you see the Uber Pulse is still fairly short. I didn't want to make this like super overpowered, like just, oh, toss it up, everyone's invincible. And it's omnidirectional. So if you throw this into traffic and there are enemies and friends, it's gonna affect all of them, but is uh, super useful if you can time it right. If say a rocket is coming in and about to hit some bots next to you that you would rather not explode, you can just <laughs> throw that one at the ground and uh, save their little meaty lives. If you don't want to save their meaty lives, we have a, uh, a new gun for the medic. I give you the medical 180. What happens when everything goes wrong? It's, uh, this is an open bolt weapon, a separate charging handle, so it's sort of like a bar or a... No, not Thompson. Yeah, just like bar style. Um, it is uh, is basically a high power version of the syringe gun. It's semi-automatic, has a huge capacity, and uh, oh. pain is mustard leaving the body. Bam. Much higher velocity, much easier to hit targets at distance with. Let's aim this down. Perfect. 
Bam. We'll see the heavy takes a few more of them. Good guy. I also tweaked the syringe sort of like penetration attachment behavior so they should bounce off at glancing angles uh, and actually stick into the meat a little more reliably. Oh, that just... That's just terrible. Focus, soldier! <laughs> oh, wonderful. I had meant to get an alternate ammo types ready for this, but because the uh, the sort of filtering panic attacks and math headache took uh, about two days longer than I anticipated, I did not get around to finishing the alternate ammo for this, but that is still coming. I just need another week to sort of finish. Uh, I needed to actually do a little bit of code changes in the AI for the SOSIGs, so I will show that to you folks uh, in the alpha after this one so but I had already integrated these into the game and into the item spawner so these were going in today no matter what that's actually let's get some more live volunteers but yeah much much easier to hit them at the distance with this oh, oh. bamo Oh, wonderful. Great stuff. Great stuff. So I hope you have fun with that. Anywho, let's jump out of VR now, and I will tell you a little more about how math tried to kill me this week. Yo! So, as I said, horrible time with math uh, this past week. Basically, what, ha what, what, what made it so difficult is I sort of started in the wrong place. Um, dealing with it. I sort of made the assumption out of the gate that this bug was caused by some sort of funky math that I had written, or more specifically that I had written lately. And so I, uh, I began the debugging process, trying to just, just like reading through being like, what could cause something to sort of pulse to the side suddenly? Um, and it made it even more complicated that it's, I, I was getting sort of like confusing reports of it getting, having the, this behavior, but differently, whether virtual stock was on or off or whether the filtering was on or off, like it wasn't clear exactly where the problem was located. And so, I just, I, I, well, I first just sort of panicked because doing a quick code review, there was no obvious problem. Uh, I tried recoding a couple sections to try to make the problem go away and it wouldn't go away. And I sort of kept working myself further and further back. And then finally made a debugging tool to see the output vectors and confirmed like, yup, something is wrong with the math here. And then it sudden, I suddenly realized like, oh, the problem is the numbers actually being output from the filtering module that I had used, which is some code I had found online that I do not understand the math behind at all. Um, and was trying to figure out what was going on with it, uh, was immediately looking for alternatives. I was like, do I have to pull the filtering out of this game at this point, uh, just because this module doesn't work? And that's where Anton learned a very important lesson. And that lesson is, if you're having trouble with a module that you downloaded, actually check to make sure you have the latest version of it. Uh, which turns out the creator of this ran into the exact same problem or another user of it. Uh, and this was fixed uh, six months after I had downloaded this module, which was of course something like two years ago. But, but yeah, so basically to, for, for those of you who are like, what is causing that very specifically, um, the easiest way to describe this is, is quaternions are terrible. Um, quaternions are the representation of a rotation that a game engine uses. And it's some obscure like 18th century German math that anyone who says they fully understand them is lying to you. Um, but the, the, the important part of this is that uh, quaternions have certain properties of sort of uh, commutivity, I think would be the way to say it, uh, that other numbers have. So like, you know how like, uh, like three times two is equal to negative three times negative two. Well, with quaternion, the it's four internal values, X, Y, Z, W. If you have a quaternion of said values, that quaternion and a quaternion that's negative X, negative Y, negative Z, negative W equal each other. 
Why is this relevant? Well, it turns out that the, the, the rotation quaternion that different VR controllers send into the system, into Unity, are different. Some of them take advantage of that, uh, that commutivity and just don't send ones with negative values. So if you're filtering, code isn't taking this into account, it's going to try to filter sort of radically opposing values as it jumps back and forth between the upper and bottom part of that range. And that's what was happening as I was hitting the very specific rotation of two controllers that was causing that sort of loop around in value. And the filtering system was trying to average them to a midpoint that was not what we wanted, that was not relevant. Um, almost like if I were to say to you, like, uh, let's, uh, if, if, you know, negative 10, if I rotate, if I, if I take my phone here and I rotate it 10 degrees this way, or I also rotate it negative 350 degrees this way, I'm at the same end point. But if I tell you I need the average of negative 10 degrees, uh, uh, or in 350 degrees, you wouldn't give me 170 degrees. That would be wrong. You'd be, you know, um, you, it would be like, it's the same. It's either of those values. That's basically what needed to get fixed with this. But it's an, it's an example of like, I still have such poor self-esteem about my coding ability that anytime I use some sort of external module or plugin or something and something goes wrong or unexpected, I, I never actually check the plugin or the code. I always make the assumption that what I've done, I've done is broken and that whatever I've plugged in does exactly what it says it does. Um, and this is just, this just relates to the fact that I'm not an engineer by training. Uh, as you probably noticed by even the way that I just described the problem that I had, uh, I have art degrees, kids. So these sorts of, these sorts of problems just strike right at the center of my like panic and, uh, and low self-esteem with doing all this stuff because I feel trapped and I don't fully understand the problem space that I'm working with, but it's all over. It all works. And, uh, yeah, I hope you all have fun continuing to play with it. Continue giving me, uh, feedback on what you think about, uh, it and whether the, the sort of hold trigger system works for you for the long range stabilization. Uh, yeah. And I'll see you all next week. Peace.